Welcome to the Terran Space Academy, where we help prepare you for a bright future in the space industry. As we start this lesson, the global pandemic is still raging, a giant ship blocking the Suez Canal has just been freed, and this starship, Starship Serial Number 11, is sitting on the launch platform ready to go. It amazes me that it was less than two years ago when SpaceX decided on this basic design using stainless steel. Starship 11 will be the last of the first iterations of Starship design, the Mark I, if you will. Starships 12, 13, and 14 will be skipped, and multiple improvements will be integrated into Starship SN15, which will basically be the first of the Mark II series. Let's take a quick look back at the amazing progress the Mark I Starship has made. In August 2019, Starhopper was basically a mobile engine and concept test device proving it was possible to launch and land a large steel tank with a Raptor engine. Then this design was stacked and displayed in September of 2019 as Starship Mark I. We can see here the different sections used to construct the ship. And after this presentation, Starship Serial Number 1 was built. It was a partial stack with both fuel and oxygen tanks separated by a common dome. Here you see the tank pressure test, and here you see it fail. The sudden expulsion of pressurized liquid nitrogen lifts the entire ship. Perfecting the tanks proved to be a problem. Propellant tanks are one of the most complicated structural issues when building a ship. Rather than stack another body section with both tanks, serial number two was just the improved fuel tank, assembled as you see here. You can see the massive forward dome at the top. Seeing the people working here shows you how big these really are. And what would be the common dome at the bottom? Here you see how they lift and move serial number two out for testing. Serial number two was pressure tested with first water, then liquid nitrogen, and passed without incident. Serial number three was a stack with both fuel and oxygen tanks, but it suffered a different fate. Here you see the top tank, for fuel, filled with liquid nitrogen for testing. The bottom tank will be holding liquid oxygen during flight, but during testing it has to remain pressurized to support the weight above it. They put the oxygen tank on bottom because liquid oxygen is denser than liquid methane, and because of the tank's sizes, will have more mass. Here you see what happens if you have a heavy upper tank and insufficient pressure in the lower tank. Starship 3 crumpled and died. Starship 4 was built, pressure tested, and passed. It was then equipped with an engine for a static fire test. It survived four quick engine firings, including one from the header tanks. And then they decided to test the quick disconnect mechanism. When the Starship is on the launch pad, it has to be filled with cryogenic fuel and oxygen. Then you have to be able to remotely disconnect these supply lines. If things don't go well, and you need to remove the fuel and oxidizer, you must remotely reconnect these lines. Here you see the quick disconnect mechanism. Quick disconnects were designed by rockets very early. At first, rockets like the V-2 were fueled with alcohol by trucks pulling up next to them and filling them up. That was quickly seen as a bad idea. It was clear that a remote mechanism was needed to fill and then disconnect from a rocket. These were invented, and you can see an early one here. This will allow you to make multiple connections at once. If you can put this on a swivel arm with a latching mechanism, then you can remotely fuel your rocket and disconnect just before launch. If launch fails, you can swing the arm out and defuel the rocket. Here you see some early valve designs for this purpose. You also had to connect and disconnect the electrical system, as you want to provide power to the batteries to the last second. And you want to be able to send commands and receive data. Once this mechanism is released, the rocket will be ran by computer program and radio signals. Here you see the quick disconnect device for the Starship. After test firing the engine on Starship 4 from the main and header tanks and dealing with a small fire from burning insulation, they tested this quick disconnect system. There was a fuel leak, and this happened. Now the media always acts like this is a catastrophe. It would be great if everything worked perfectly the first time, but that usually means something is waiting to sneak up on you. This thing was never going to fly. It was built strictly for testing, 
and would have been torn apart had it not conveniently disassembled itself. Next was Starship Serial Number 5. It was a full tank stack with one Raptor engine, number 27, and flew a 150 meter hop perfectly. Next was number 6. It also flew perfectly using engine number 29. Starship 7 was a test tank using thinner steel and passed with no problems. Then it was tested to failure to find the limits of its construction. Starship 8 was the first fully assembled Starship. We saw it launch, fly perfectly, and land hard due to insufficient fuel header tank pressurization. They decided to add helium to pressurize the header tanks and launched Starship 9. Starship 9 also flew perfectly but had an engine start fail and did not have enough power in the one remaining engine to complete the flip maneuver. Starship 10 was launched and was able to land, but it had a problem with landing leg deployment and had too much helium going through the engine, robbing it of some thrust, and it landed hard, but it survived, until a leak from the bottom tank caused a rupture and threw the ship into the air, just like serial number one, if you'll remember. The difference is that when you have leaking liquid nitrogen, there is no explosion. When you rupture tanks full of methane and oxygen, you do get a big explosion. And that brings us to serial number 11. Serial number 11 was planned to launch today, but they had to scrub due to weather. We will try to live stream the actual flight or have an immediate recap with commentary. The progress SpaceX has made in just two years is amazing. If you compare it to the rocket company started by Jeff Bezos, Blue Origin, you see a dramatic difference. Blue Origin started several years before SpaceX, but from what I can see, it is following the Boeing playbook. Don't do anything if there is any chance of failure. Make everything so expensive that you can't test it on the ground, and then hope it all works well when you launch it. The motto of Blue Origin is Gratatum Ferocitur, step by step ferociously. Maybe there is a lot happening behind the scenes that I'm not aware of. They are a much more secretive company than SpaceX. But I don't see a lot of steps being made. SpaceX is not afraid to fail in order to succeed. I think the motto for SpaceX should be Ad Astra Obsque Tempore Tabe Paradis, to the stars without wasting time. Thanks for listening. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Help us out on Patreon if you can. And stay safe. Ad Astra Proterra.